Please welcome Managing Director of Principal Real Estate Investors, Vance Voss. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see so many of you here as we take a deeper dive into some of the latest initiatives that have been brewing within the USGBC and GBCI. Before we begin, I'm curious to know who, who's in the room today. Please raise your hand if you are a lead professional and or work in design and construction. Wow. Now, now raise your hand if you work in a related field like real estate, finance, policy, utilities, urban planning, and or other, any other sector that touches but not exclusively focuses on, on the, the green building sector. That covers pretty much everybody, I think, today. Take note to the mix of people we have here in the room today. Just, be, just being in the same room gives us an opportunity to share knowledge and experience and moves us closer to a greener built environment for all. Today I have the great pleasure of introducing this session, which will take us through the long-term vision for tracking sustainability performance. This group will touch on how LEED will integrate with other offerings within GBCI's ever-expanding uh, rating system, including WELL, PEER, SITES, PARKSMART, and GRES. Scott Horst most recently served as USGBC's Chief Product Officer, and we're now excited to introduce him as the CEO of ARC, a new technology organization to further the performance of the green building industry. In his previous role, Scott oversaw the development of LEED version 4, and he was the chief innovator behind the LEED dynamic plaque. In his new role, he will advance our performance-based ecosystem of rating systems, encouraging green building owners, professionals, and occupants to measure and improve on, building, on their building's impact. Please join me in welcoming Scott Horst. Thank you, Vance. Thank you. Thank you, Vance, and uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. Um, you may have noticed that one of the participants of this session is sitting down in front, Mahesh Ramanujam. Uh, if you didn't notice, um, some of you were updated by the app, but Mahesh is not going to join this session uh, as a presenter. We've been talking a lot about how to uh, meld the the propensity that I have for talking about big ideas when people sometimes wander out of the session going, what did he say? <laughs> and, and Mahesh's propensity to talk about the details so you know exactly what to get done and mix them together. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit at the beginning here about strategy and how we've thought about strategy over time and what our new strategy is for going forward to make lead uh, grow, but also how to expand the borders of LEED in several different directions. And then we're going to bring out three new leaders in the organization and colleagues to present those directions. So on Tuesday, you may have noticed, <coughs> we introduced ARC. <laughs> Thank you. We're very excited about ARC because um, ARC is uh, essentially has been years in the making, and what ARC is, is taking something that we, that we already do as a core competency and setting it into a different organization so it can work and do what it does best. So USGBC will focus on building rating systems, doing uh, standards development, all the things that it does, rating system development really well. GBCI will focus on doing certifications, and ARC will focus on technology. Now, you might ask, why would you put an older gentleman in charge of a technology company? <laughs> um, so I'll just, I'll just bring it up as one of the obvious things you're probably wondering. What I want to say is, like, I, I consider myself already just a transitional leader, someone that can bring this into the world of new people. We already have an amazing team working on, uh, on, the, on the, this approach. But... Um, what we really want to do is make sure that it's completely aligned with all the knowledge we have of the systems that we build and, and how we do that really well. So I bring that knowledge to the table. That's why I'm doing this at this point. What I want to show you uh, while we start here is what, what our next strategy is for how we're expanding lead and how we're 
taking, we're, we're essentially messing a little with the boundaries of what we've called lead both higher, lower, and also broader and wider. I want to do that by telling you what our strategy has been over the past. So we're going to start just by giving a couple of examples. This was the original strategy slide of USGBC. Does anyone rec remember this slide? Raise your hand if you do. This slide was, was made uh, somewhere around 2000. This particular slide is from a, a slide that I had from 2003. But this was, this was the slide that guided how we built rating systems. What you'll see is on the left, the line is lawbreakers. That's code. The big joke was always to say the code building is the, is the worst building you're allowed to build by law without going to jail. Everyone always laughed. That, we've been saying that for decades. <laughs> and, then, and then you've got this big lump of the market, and then you've got risk takers up at the top, and then you've got 20% 20 20 of market leaders. So our goal was when we started to say, how do you start and not boil the ocean? The real challenge is like there were just so many bad buildings when, when LEED was getting started and building practice was so incredibly bad. How do you get started? And we decided to start with the top. So the focus from the very beginning has been go after the top 25% and go and give them, give them awards, give them LEED silver, or certified silver, it was bronze at first, silver, gold, and platinum. And if, you, and if you change those people, they'll constantly keep moving forward, and that big hump will keep following it. And I have to say that that has actually worked incredibly well, especially in new construction. Because what we've seen many, many times again is people using specific technologies or specific requirements in a credit and doing it around the world. Now, it's cool when you do it on your own project, right? Like, let's say, let's just take one of my favorites, low flow fixtures. You do it on your project, it's really cool. But when thousands and thousands and thousands of projects around the world are doing it, it's transformational. What happens is everything changes. All of a sudden, all the companies are making fixtures to those specifications. And now I can go to Newark Airport or I can go to um, hospitals and museums and they have low flow fixtures and they have nothing to do with lead. We've done that. And we've done that because we've done it over and over and over again with specific technologies that are defined by requirements in the rating system. Now, this is the second strategy slide. This is a strategy slide that we used when we were beginning V4. Uh, it's a, it, essentially, it's a, it's a roadmap slide. This, this slide was put together by the late Malcolm Lewis and Brendan Owens. This slide, you'll see at the top, says zero impact. And you see the lead systems as we do different versions marching up uh, up so that, you know, in the next version, uh, lead platinum should be net zero and so on. And you see present day showing that right now uh, platinum is below zero. But the key piece of this was that the assumption was that the building codes were going to keep pushing the market up from the bottom. So that what we were doing in the lower ends of lead wouldn't matter as much. Well, of course, we all know that codes have worked, had really changed a lot, but codes get picked up in pieces. So uh, so what has worked really well in California doesn't work very well at all in my state of Pennsylvania, for example. <clears throat> this strategy was key to what has been happening in the last few years. In around 2009, what was happening was we had a huge amount of pressure for people wanting to use the rating system outside the United States. The conventional wisdom at the time was, in rating systems, was Environmentalism is always regional. So create, you have to have regional rating systems for, uh, for regional places. But we kept going around the world and seeing at the time that different rating systems were doing that very well. But nobody was saying, what about a global rating system? What about one rating system for the whole world and we all work on it together? So we established this strategy of global, regional, local. A global system, one system, we work on it together. We pulled together the LEED International Roundtable, which to me is one of the great successes of our organization. This year there were 41 countries at the table on Monday. It was awesome. If you're in the room, please raise your hand. Yes, yes. And what's cool is that we've taken those leaders and now they're part of the steering committee. So the steering committee this year for the first time had a chair from Canada outside the United States, which is awesome. And next year it'll be Christina Gamboa who's in the room, who will be a chair from Colombia, 
for the first time in the United States, someone, or for the first time in the Lead Steering Committee, someone chairing uh, from South America. And we've had seven different countries represented on the Steering Committee. To me, this is truly what a global system looks like when you're, when you're trying to function in a way that doesn't make it feel like it's a U.S. system. The goal has been make everybody feel that lead comes from anywhere. Don't make it feel like it's coming from Washington, D.C. So how do we, how do we think about that? We think, this is, this is what we've been saying, distributed intelligence, you always know your place better than anybody else. I can't tell you from Washington, D.C. what your place is, but centralized nervous system. This has been a key strategy. This, is, this has changed everything because now we're saying, use what we do to tie everything together. So, so the lead credits tie everything together, and I have to say, what we're doing with ARC is to put that on steroids. We're, we're trying to figure out ways to tie things together around the world that allows actions to be connected. The mission statement of ARC is, connect, ARC's mission is to connect all actions in a single platform that creates a higher quality of life. The idea is that the organization uses technology to bump up and push up the missions of GBCI and USGBC. <clears throat> this is what happened. These are projects occurring over time. I love this slide. Th they aren't cumulative. This is lead projects occurring, and what you see at the bottom is time. So 2003, you see leads growing in the United States. 2004, 2005 still growing in the United States, a few projects happening around the world. Now we get to 2009 and 2010 when we create, decided to create a single system for the world and you see what happens. People love benchmarking themselves against each other. We love feeling global. There's something about us that really loves this connection with each other and that particular strategy has made such a huge difference. So now you can't do a lead project in any major market anywhere in the world, I'm sorry, you can't do a project that's not lead in any major market in the world. So now let me talk about our new strategy and then introduce the people that are gonna talk about how it gets implemented or what it looks like. So our new strategy looks like this, here are buildings or here's building, it's not just buildings, it might be cities. Business as usual, best practice, and collecting rent. So business, is obviously, it's kind of obvious, right? The ones on the left collecting rent, they're, they're most of the buildings that we see everywhere. They're buildings that may not have capital budgets to improve, they may just be sitting there, nobody's really caring about them, that's the worst of the worst. The, the ones on the far left are like falling apart. Now in between here is where lead functions. This, this is business as usual and best practice. And you could argue all kinds of ways about where we've been pulling up the market, but you, all, you could also say, I think it's fair to say that lead platinum is like a compendium of best practice. It's, it's like, if you do a lead platinum project, you're doing the stuff that, that works the best for any project anywhere. But then, of course, we also know that there's beyond. There are different programs that go beyond lead platinum. And there, there are new ways of thinking about what beyond is on that side. But this is our new strategy. Our new strategy is to go beyond in this direction. See, we know, and this has been a discussion that's been happening for many, many years, how do we go down and hook that part of the market and bring them up? What you see with those four pendants of lead is a, a set of boundaries. You see that, like, and those boundaries are set by prerequisites. So what we're doing is we're saying, instead of saying, here's the bar, and unless you can jump that high, you can't even play in this game, we're turning it from a high jump into a long jump. And we're saying, instead of jumping high, it doesn't matter if you don't jump as far, you're gonna be in the same pit. We're all, we want everybody to get in the same pit. We want anyone on that bottom end to be part of the lead ecosystem. We want them to be connected so we can pull them in. Because you know what we're really good at? We're really good at saying, now here's one credit, and if you just get two more, you can get certified, or if you just get two more, you can get gold. I mean, it, you've always heard that, right? That's what happens on projects all the time. So what you're gonna hear today is three people talking about this and something else. Gretchen Sweeney's gonna come out and talk about beyond going down. 
Gautami Palanki is going to talk about beyond going up and a new, ver a new level of lead beyond platinum. And Melissa Baker is going to talk about lead as the core of a whole set of rating systems that go deeper out into the market. So you've got lead, and then let's say you've got well. She's going to show how this works. And they overlap in all these ways. Now, what if we're automatically generating scorecards for those systems? So as you're doing lead, you know how far you are into well. And then you just have to do two more things, and you can get well certified. And then what if you're, also, what if you're someone from sites, and then you're, you're getting that automated uh, uh, scorecard generated, and you only have to do three more things to get to silver? That's our new strategy. So we're going to go higher, lower, broader, and wider. Let me introduce to you three people that are going to tell you exactly how that works. Please come out. Gretchen Sweeney. <laughs> Thank you. Gretchen, Gretchen implements technical development of LEAD and the performance platform with volunteers and partners around the globe. She has a background in finance and urban planning and design. Gretchen excels at translating abstract concepts, me, into concrete actions and <laughs> <in> progress. <laughs> Melissa Baker. Melissa creates solutions for rating systems. She's passionate about making things work, uptake across a wide variety of sectors. She has a background in, vi in environmental policy. Melissa, Melissa is deeply committed to the art of the possible. Gautami Polanki develops the lead global market deployment for performance products at USGBC. She's an architect with experience in building technology and high performance operations. Gautami is strategic, unflappable, and unfailingly optimistic. Now, the coolest thing that I, that I, I think um, anyone that, that has, is, has a leader, is, is fortunate enough to be a leader in a, in a group, is that you get to find other leaders. The, the wonderful thing that we keep learning from Rick and that Mahesh keeps saying over and over is, let's build other people up. Here are three leaders of the organization, and I believe you're going to be very impressed with what they have to show. I think I need the clicker. Hi. We'll just do a little song and dance real fast while we wait for the clicker. Perfect. Technology. OK. Thank you, Scott. So we unveiled the Lead Dynamic Plaque and the Performance Score in 2013 as a way to keep your initial lead certification current. Our goal was to make everything simpler using data. Today, I'm incredibly excited to announce a new performance pathway to lead for existing building certification, one that is a truly data-driven option. For the next year, project teams can pursue an initial lead certification for their operational building using their performance score offered through the ARC platform. The steps are simple. Register in the ARC platform. Achieve a pre-certification by confirming your best practices and policies. Input data for a 12-month performance period. Submit to GBCI, who will review that data, and achieve lead certification. Here's a little more detail. After registration, you confirm that you've implemented these critical policies on site to achieve the pre-certification. Even before you have data, we help you demonstrate that you are laying a path to certification that you're laying a foundation for high performance. Next, you provide data from 12 months of operation. And once you achieve a score of 40 or more, you can just su submit to GBCI for review to receive that lead certification. And most importantly, after you become lead certified, you continue to provide data to track and manage performance, leveraging your policies and your practices, as well as any new interventions to maintain your lead certification and demonstrate that your commitment has not gone away. Today, I get to give you the first public demonstration of how this will work in our platform for any project that wants a lead for existing buildings certification. So this looks like a simple landing page. What waits behind it is an integrated platform connecting usgbc.org to GBIG to Lead Online to Lead Dynamic Plaque, excuse me, leadon.io, which currently hosts the Lead Dynamic Plaque. It's a single entry point for your existing building. 
To get started, you sign in with your login from any one of these platforms, and it immediately takes you to your portfolio of projects. If they're already in Lead Online or leadon.io, they will be here. And if they're not in the system, you simply click Add Project. Input some basic details, size, location, and you're in. Immediately, it shows your project's potential performance score. This is probably a lot more, this is not probably, this is a lot more um, significant than it might seem. Previously, you had to be doing lead credits to be part of the lead system. Now you can come into the system and start to compare your project to other projects. You're in the system and you're not lead yet. You see there's no lead logo in the middle of the racetrack. But you are connected to lead. So how do you get to lead certification from here? First, you need to take action. ARC is all about actions. And you can access a list of the actions you can take on the menu on the left. Here's where you find the policies you need to confirm are in place, the data inputs you need to provide the score, and optional strategies you can deploy to increase your performance score. You'll see the current status of each action on the left and your team management tools on the right. Let's select a requirement, the site management policy. We provide you with a template policy. You confirm that you've implemented the policy on site, one that's as good as or better than the one we provided, and you upload that policy. As you do that, with each requirement, you see your checklist grows shorter. When you've checked off all the policies and best practices, you'll receive a notification. You're pre-certified. When you achieve pre-certification, it lasts just one year. Now is the time to work towards certification. Now is the time for data. So let's look at energy data. For those of you familiar with the Lead Dynamic Plaque, this will look somewhat familiar, but with a variety of enhancements, including the ability to see much more historic data, a place to upload your utility bills, for example, right alongside the trend visuals, and summary info information about the data you have provided. Once you've uploaded the required data for 12 months of the performance period, check your progress under all actions. At this, any time throughout that period, click on Performance Score, and you'll be able to watch your numbers grow. And when you hit your target score, it's time to submit for certification. You can do that when you reach a score of 40 or more. GBCI, GBCI already has the data and the documents it needs to complete a review. You just need to tell them that you are ready. Soon you'll be reviewing your first lead certification level on a timeline of all your project's achievements. And when you check your performance score, you'll see a lead logo in the middle of the racetrack. So now is the time to celebrate. If you wish, you can share a link to your performance score with your most important stakeholders or with the world. Lead for existing buildings cannot get more accessible than this. Yes. So let's take one step further. Many projects may not choose to pursue lead certification. Maybe they cannot yet achieve certain credits. They want to improve their building, and they still want to see where they stand. They need a pathway forward. The performance score and the ARC platform are available for all buildings. Any building can celebrate its sustainability pathway through a data-centric approach. Projects enter data that is readily available and receive a score. So let's go look at one important section again the Add a Project section. It bears repeating. For years, people couldn't connect to us unless they planned to certify. It didn't make sense to interlead online, research best practice, or look through a reference guide unless you were going to certify your building. You really thought you could do it. Now you don't have to figure out exactly what you're going to achieve immediately. Just enter the platform, start where you are, progress as you can with lead guiding the way. We discuss lead projects. Let's talk about lead in the future. The ARC platform will, will allow projects that have been certified by other green building frameworks to register in the ARC platform. And then schemes like GreenStar, BREAM, DGNB, 3STAR, GreenMark, GREHA, IGBC, Energy Star, all of these and more, they can earn a score. And the next step after that is lead certification. This is what it means to go deeper into the market, to introduce lead to people who were previously left behind to offer a hand to pull up those who are struggling with their first steps. 
and then to aggregate our shared accomplishments across projects all over the globe and in one place, and to tell our story and work together. Leaders in the top 25% together with leaders at every level, and that is going deeper into the market. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, glad to be here today. Let me get my clicker. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I was thinking about it because, of course, it's Green Build, and there's a lot of awesome stuff that we get to talk about and we get to do and see. I think this is the thing that I'm the most excited about, getting to share with you these ideas, the work that we've done, the work that you have done with us, both our staff in the audience as well as everyone else who I know works very hard on green buildings every day. Um, I'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary with USGBC, and so I can tell you, oh, thank you guys. So I can tell you that for 10 years, we have been working on some of these ideas and bringing them forward, and now we're in a place where we really have some exciting announcements, and I think it's really going to work for your work. So let me get into the details. Um, you've come with us on this journey. We started with lead version one. We're at lead version four. Very excited about that, and we know that as we clarify this new existing and ongoing strategy based on the ARC platform, it includes further simplifications to our existing buildings program, as you heard from Gretchen, and really gives us an opportunity that we haven't had before to scale beyond LEAD, or to expand LEAD, if you will. So seven months ago, my life changed quite a bit. For the better, of course, this is my daughter, Cecilia. And so now I have a very personal reason to you know, really know there's an urgency in getting these solutions right. So you can believe me when I tell you that all the work that we do comes from the heart, because we have our, our reasons to, to really get this right. So how will we make this happen? GBCI in the past two years has expanded to administer several complementary rating systems in addition to LEED. With the addition of these rating systems, WELL, PEER, SITES, GRES, EDGE, PARKSMART, and announced this week Zero Waste and the Investor Confidence Project, or ICP, we're expanding beyond buildings and covering virtually every aspect of the sustainability industry. And the first step in that expansion is really about service integration. And I know, and I actually see several faces here who are our fantastic GBCI reviewers, experts that have come from the market and provide you with that highest level of service. And the great thing about expanding that is that now all these rating systems have that same high level of service. That GBCI core infrastructure is performing the certifications for these rating systems. For a long time, or I guess in the last couple of years, we've gotten the question, why is GBCI acquiring all these rating systems? I think everyone was a little bit amused at the change from LEED to such a long list of rating systems. But now, we're actually not getting that question so much anymore. I think everybody's just excited to be able to use the rating systems. And what they're really saying now is, how do I most effectively implement this on my project? If I want to hit one, two, all of the rating systems, what do I need to do in my project to really be effective? And how can I streamline that work? We know there's some great significant overlap over these rating systems. And that meant we had a pretty uh, huge opportunity to simplify, to streamline, and enhance your user experience as you implement multiple rating systems on a project. So we started to look credit by credit and do a comparison between the rating systems. And I would expect that you know, any of you doing this analysis would have started in the same place doing that crosswalk. And you probably reached the same conclusion we did pretty quickly, which is that it's really difficult at a credit level, at a compliance level, to do that kind of crosswalk. Each credit in each rating system comes from the language and the background, the field of that rating system. So it's not usually a direct one for one on the requirements. <clears throat> so we had to take a step back and really think about how we could make this work. And we came back to the core of LEAD. What, the thing that makes LEAD the most special, the intent behind the credits that actually drives the behavioral change and drives the actions that you take. This is really how LEAD has transformed the market one project at a time. And once we focused on the intentions, the intents behind the credits, 
In LEAD and in these other rating systems, it was actually much easier to identify the overlapping credits. As you know, we work with the Well Building Standard and IWBI. So let me give you an example. When we started to look at the intents behind the credits, it was fairly easy to figure out that, you know, if our intent is to have a certain amount of outside air come into the building, really have good air quality, that there was a credit in lead and a feature in well that really were driving sort towards that same intent. So if you're earning that lead credit on your project, then we could also award the well feature at the same time. And you'd get points for both with one set of documentation. Here's another example, and obviously these are just some examples to get our conversation started. There's more crosswalks between well and, you know, in, and obviously other categories besides just indoor air quality, but just to give you a, a sense of what we're driving towards. And then with well, because performance verification is really what makes that standard special and unique, we stuck to the features that are not requiring on-site performance verification right now, and we'll look at that as a potential for the future. And here's a couple more, just again to sort of get the wheels turning as to how we can do dual awarding of credits and really drive at the, some of those same intents, like having a healthy entrance uh, with LEAD and with WELL. <laughs> so this is what you'd see in the online when you're working with a project that is attempting both rating systems. Um, the interface will shortly be available and it'll be in the ARC platform. And what you'd see on the left-hand side are the LEAD points, the lead credits attempted. And then on the right-hand side, of course, is what well features would be awarded based on the lead credits earned. And that's because the intents are aligned behind the credits and the features. We were able to extend that same methodology to sites. And again, just some examples from lead and from sites where if you earn something in lead, you can also earn that same uh, credit within sites because the intents are, are aligned around things like managing rainwater on site, reducing outdoor water use, um, taking that building in life cycle impact and reducing it. So say, sharing that same intent, driving towards the same performance goals. And one more example from the ParkSmart rating system. Another place where if you are earning the lead credits, you can receive uh, the same credits awarded in ParkSmart. In the near future, we'll provide that same functionality for peer, edge, GRESB, and zero waste. And all of this will show up in their certification platforms. So it's easy for you to document once and receive credit under multiple rating systems. So, so far we've talked about three key themes. One is that service integration from GBCI across the rating systems. The second is, of course, meeting the shared intents. And then the third being the integration of the rating systems. So what comes next? As you know, we have key performance indicators, or KPIs, that we work with under the LEAD rating system. And here are the KPIs for LEAD that I think everyone's probably pretty familiar with at this point. Um, the good thing about these KPIs is that they actually generate a score for LEAD on the ARC platform. And this forms the basis for certifying lead buildings, not only initially, but also in an ongoing basis. In the near term, we will generate KPIs, comprehensive KPIs, for all these other rating systems. And so each of them could then have a score within the ARC platform. <laughs> Our strategy with GBCI is to expand these new markets, build capacity, and create value. And through the seamless integration of the rating systems, we are all expanding, transforming, and embracing that next generation of green building. LEAD is globally recognized. LEAD is everywhere. And we are leveraging that global LEAD system to really take the network, the learning, the brand value that we have created together and expand beyond buildings. It's really imperative that we make a difference. Obviously, my reasons are here and very personal. That's my reason for wanting to make the difference. And I think the opportunity and the platform that we need to make that difference is here. I'm proud of that. I understand the importance of it. But I also don't want to de-emphasize how much we want to support your work and how happy it makes me and how proud it makes me to honor that shared commitment to expand our effort beyond buildings. Thank you.
Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. The theme for this green build is iconic green. Um, and I feel in just the two days, yesterday and today, we have already reached new levels of being iconic. Uh, with all of you, uh, there's been a new announcement at every plenary, including this. Uh, I hope you're ready for one more. So we talked about going deeper into the market with operational buildings. We talked about expanding uh, the physical boundaries of a building into the site, into grids, into communities, um, into cities, uh, as uh, Scott announced, Lead for Cities. Uh, and I'm here to talk about going beyond platinum, pushing our aspirations for buildings that can do better towards a regenerative built environment. So what does that mean? Uh, we're always excited to share uh, stories of leaderships, um, stories from all of you about lead platinum projects. These are those exceptional projects worldwide that continue to deliver um, a reason for innovation, a new idea into the market. Um, there's about 6,000 of these worldwide, um, including 58 countries, India included, uh, US, Canada being the top three markets. A lead platinum building is a part of our everyday life. It's the office star that you might go to, the home that Ed Bagley Jr. lives in, <laughs> uh, a school, um, a hospital, a hotel. Uh, it's really a part of our daily life more than we think about it. In the first lead platinum certification, does anyone want to take a guess when that was? <laughs> it was in the year 2000. In the first eight years, from 2000 to 2008, we've had 250 LEED Platinum certifications. In the next eight years, 2008 to 2016, we're already beyond 6,000 LEED Platinum certifications. That applause is for all of you. All of you and each one of you who has helped drive this path to innovation. But it's also an indicator, isn't it? The market is telling us that we're ready to do more. If we can do 6,000 in eight years when we did only 250, we're ready to go beyond. We're ready to go beyond platinum. So I'm very excited to announce that we're going to look at ways to celebrate this exceptional level of performance of regenerative buildings worldwide. Let's talk about that for a second. What does it mean? Do you have to do more credits? Are there going to be more prerequisites? We've already established there's better ways to do that. Data is the core of LEED. Data is going to help define beyond, perform beyond platinum. Data is what is going to drive change and what is going to drive performance. I've spoken to a lot of you in the room and I can't get away without saying lead dynamic plaque in our conversation. <laughs> but since yesterday, I can call it ARC, so now you can hear me talk about ARC and performance. Data is not new. I'm an architect. Data is available even before you build the building. How big is your site? What is the FAR? How many floors? How many people? All of these are data points that help us build an inspirational building, and then operate it. Data is not new to LEED as well. How many of you have done an energy simulation model, a daylighting analysis, the ventilation prereq, the indoor water calculator? This is all data that we've used to generate our LEED scorecards, our LEED certification levels. Um, it's what we use to design and later operate the building. So what does that mean now? It means that in ARC, you have streamlined access to interact with this data. It's going to help you track and engage with that data to not only ensure that your building is actually going beyond platinum, but maybe determine where you're at today. Is it certified? 
silver, gold, platinum, or beyond platinum. We're ready today to take on the challenge of beyond platinum. The platform is already calibrated to track net zero carbon, net zero waste, net zero water. A perfect score indicates that. So any building that has this score is not generating any carbon from energy and transportation, is not using any portable water, is not generating any waste, and above all, providing an exceptional level of indoor environmental quality to its occupants. This is not impossible. I'm an architect. I'm an optimist, as Scott already said. I aspire for buildings to be better, and I know together we can do that. That really helps with the confidence. Uh, yes. <laughs> the idea of regeneration um, is the idea of giving back. How do we give back to nature more than we take from it? The idea of a perfor perfect performance score is the idea of a building that's in sync with all of us. Um, it helps the building understands what temperature we like to be at. Um, is the acoustical level helping with our productivity? Do we like it warmer or cooler? Do I like to sit next to Gretchen? Are we happy to be at this master series or should we have taken a late lunch? These are all data points that the score can reflect. Data is what's going to drive this change. Data is about you and me. We are at the table for every ideation meeting, every key decision, and with Mahesh and Scott making decisions like this, that this is what the market needs right now. Together, I'm not, I'm not offering a solution that's very far away. It's something we can do today. Are you ready to go beyond platinum with me? So we didn't want to leave the stage. <laughs> um, and we're just going to uh, go through a few questions that each one of us had as we were working through our presentations. So you heard deeper, broader, and beyond. This makes our box a little bit fuzzy. We're taking off the boundaries above and below. Gretchen, what does that really mean? Uh, great question, Gautami. <laughs> Um, no, I think, I think what it means is that we are now able to recognize and reward leadership and progress along a continuum. Uh, it doesn't mean we're just giving people points for showing up. You still have to do something. But now we're pulling everyone into this space where we can help them learn what it is they need to do next. And the things that are there that we're helping them learn, those are the things that are right for the time they're at, for the place they're at, um, for the market they're in and for the resources they have. Okay. So, I have a question for Melissa. Okay. Uh, Melissa, with all of these um, new systems, with all of this integration, do you think that we're really helping people do, do more or is it just the same? Can you really do more and more and more? That's a good question. Um, I, I definitely think the answer is yes, you can really do more. Um, and we know from you all in the market that there are more things that you want to do. I've certainly heard from many people that they are using multiple rating systems. I think Scott actually got to the heart of it in his introduction. When we work with lead, when we work with project teams, they may have a goal of lead silver. And then they start doing the work, they start tallying up their scorecard, and they see, okay, with three more points, we're going to be at lead gold. And, and it really lights a fire under the team. Everybody says, I want to get to lead gold. I want that next level of achievement. We want to work together, bring it together, get to that next level. So I think by showing in, in a similar way, you've done the work in lead. This is how close you are to well, or this is how close you are to park smart because you've got this stellar parking garage you're putting up next to your lead building. I think it will drive that same desire to really push and to do a little bit more. Or it's great information so that you know that your program hits on certain marks 
around things that are related to buildings but not necessarily about the building, like the site, the landscape. And so then you can do more on that next project and start to integrate that into your overall plans and have it you know, work across your building portfolio. So yes, I think we can do more. I think people will do more when they see how close they are. <laughs> now to me. I have a question for you. Uh, you have given us a lot of great ideas. I think we're really excited about regenerative buildings and really going beyond. But, you know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, what can we do to actually get started? You can call me. <laughs> um, call Gautami. <laughs> yes. um, I think data is the key. Each one of you has a building that has data available. You can put that in and see where you're at. If you're under certified, that's fine. At least you know where you are. Um, and then that can help you move from operational to optimized to high performance and to regenerative. All of this is possible if you start somewhere and you start with what you have. And that can be data in the ARC platform. Let's not be afraid to drive this change. And to talk some more about that, let's call back Scott. Thank you, everyone. So let me ask a couple more questions here. Then I'm going to ask Mahesh to come up <clears throat> to say a few words as well. Um, but I'm not sure I heard this question, especially to you, Gretchen. And I, I'm, I'm interested if you all might be able to answer this. Uh, are we making the rating system less robust? Are we, are we lowering the bar? Are we doing something that, uh, that we should feel bad about? I just don't see how we can make something less robust when we have more information. Information that everyone um, is trying so hard to get right now. Uh, the data is, is there. We're, we're, we have disclosure. Uh, we have all sorts of folks and all sorts of technologies uh, finding new ways to bring the data out. Um, our system is about data, and that data in a lot of ways is more rigorous uh, and more sophisticated um, than intentions. And not that intentions aren't good, they're incredibly critical to your su success going forward. Um, but I think with the data that we're asking for and the data that we're going to see in the scores, it's, it's always going to be more and more robust. So, yeah, in, anyone else have a thought about that? No, yes. no? okay, so. <laughs> So can, can any of you talk a little bit more about what leadership at all levels means? I mean, do you really, like, so, so we've set the bar saying basically you're a leader if you can get to Energy Star 75, right? And that, that Energy Star 75 prerequisite reflects that 25% strategy slide, if you all recall, right? So, so we finally built to the point to say we're only interested in 25% of the market. Now we're interested in helping other people because we believe that we can actually have a larger impact on climate change if we're helping people improve buildings that are running very poorly. So what does it mean, let's say I've got a building that runs poorly, can I be a leader? Yes, you can. I think you're setting the example for so many others that are in that same situation. Um, Having an NG Star score is great. I think we're always going to celebrate that above and beyond 75. Um, it does represent you're in the top 25. There's a majority in the other 75. And there's others like you. So, not you. Um, <laughs> there's others in, the, others in the same boat, and you are setting that example of uh, that change is possible, improvement is possible. But you have to start somewhere. Yeah, and you have to create a community. I mean, you have to, that's what we're doing. I mean, that's what LEED's always, always been about. That's what USGBC and GBCI have always been about, um, creating a community and creating connections, which we've talked about is what the ARC platform is all about. You learn from your peers, so but what that's about, critical. What about I'm the, I'm the one that I'm differentiating myself because I'm, I'm jumping that high bar. So that basically keeps a bunch of people out, right? But so I'm differentiating myself, and that's, I'm yeah. giving you a hard question. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, I, I know that we that's We didn't realize this. <laughs> so, so, so what does that mean? I'm, I'm differentiating myself, like, does, should, does that mean that we shouldn't allow other people in because the differentiator is the key? I will say, this is just, this is my hope for what comes out of this. I think 
we talk a lot to owners that have broad portfolios. There's a lot of buildings, there's a wide variety of performance that needs to be recognized. And I think by opening the door and, and bringing all these buildings in, we're allowing for recognition to happen at all levels. So not to say that that leader doesn't get recognized for being a leader and for really hitting a high bar. I mean, that's part of why we'll keep the certification levels, right? They'll still be hitting that high level. They'll still be platinum or hopefully beyond platinum. But then we can also challenge everyone else who's doing good stuff, maybe that they learn from that leader, but not necessarily at that same level or same, you know, or ability to certify will still get recognized and then hopefully be pushed to then continue their performance. It's kind of like if LEED were a, a, a gym where you go to get healthy, it, like right now the way we have it set up is you've got to lose a certain amount of weight before you can get a gym membership. Right. Right? <laughs> yep. Exactly. So, so you can only get in and, and oh, get no. healthy if you've already lost weight. So what we're saying now is actually we want everyone in the gym it, it's just that once you lose a specific amount of weight, we're going to recognize you in a different way. Yeah. If you're a bodybuilder, we'll still give you... And to a yeah. certain extent, right, the you, you can still get rewarded. <laughs> very, very, yes. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, we've said you can't even get on the scale to find out how you're doing to even then get in the gym if we want to carry it that much further. And that's when you have a, a big portfolio. You, you say, I have so many that I haven't even been able to measure. So what, where do I start and how do I measure? And another key thing that I think it's really important for Saul to understand is that some of the, diff some of the key barriers that we've set up, like we don't understand what the barriers are when people don't do lead. When we, we only understand what works with lead when people do it. When people, and I hear over and over again people saying, well, we certified to lead or, or we're certifiable or actually we were going to do lead and then we realized we couldn't meet that prerequisite Energy Star 75 because we're in a country where they don't have it. So then we had to figure out like how are we going to do a benchmark or how are we going to come up with some weird way every place in the world. So we haven't known what isn't working. So what if we remove this barrier, allow people in the door, recognize leadership and get their data? A key differentiator too, or a key item that's been a huge market barrier for the existing building's market is, in order to play, you've got to register a lead project, and you've got to buy a reference guide, and you probably have to hire a consultant to help you understand what's going on the first time to get over that barrier. Now we're saying, just share your data. You're in the door. Get on the treadmill. Get started. Start losing weight. Come every day. Do what it is you need to do. And, and we'll help you and we'll recognize you when, you when you keep moving along. Okay, so <clears throat> let me share just a few thoughts then uh, and then I want to invite Mahesh to come up and, and say a few words. Uh, these are changes and, and I guess the question that we have is like, you know, what, what kind of change is there? I, I, when, when, I, when we started thinking about this, I think um, it was Gal to me that said, people are going to be pretty freaked out with these changes. I don't think, I don't see, you don't look too freaked out. I mean, we'll hear later. <laughs> but, but, but to me, uh, to me, the reality is that these are evolutionary changes. They aren't revolutionary changes. What, what, what's going to continue to happen is that as we build, it's really been Mahesh's vision to keep finding new rating systems and new markets and new audiences and connect them together, which we'll be doing in the ARC platform, so we keep bringing more audiences in the same place and they can find ways to connect with each other to do different things, as I was saying before. But I, I want to tell you one of my favorite quotes from a television show lately. It's, um, how many of you saw Deadwood? It was, it was quite a while ago. So there's this fellow, Al Swearingen, who's like the proprietor of a, a, a speaky, or like a, it's, it's like a brothel, essentially in a bar, in uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. And he, and everything is changing, like he's been the king of the town and everything is changing. And uh, uh, this, uh, one of the fellows that works for him is sitting at the bar and as things are changing, he's going like, you know, I'm getting older, I ain't so friendly to change. And Al Swearingen takes a drink of whiskey and he goes, change ain't looking for friends. <laughs> he said, change plays the tune that we dance to. Now to me, to me that, that like, I, I love that because we are in the change business. 
And we have to be very careful about taking what we've had that works, what we've built that works, and continue to build upon it. And it's very, very scary when you do that because you're always afraid you're going to wreck it, like it's this some amazing secret sauce. But the reality is that people keep coming to Green Build and keep people keep doing lead and they keep, are, keep doing these other rating systems because they want to be part of something better. They want to do better work. It's a, it's a natural human characteristics. I don't think it, it even exists on the planet that people don't want to be better. There are people that are bad people. They still want to be better. Everybody wants to be better. That's why these systems work. So, so what we want to do is keep guiding ourselves into the 21st century so we're as up-to-date as we can possibly be. I honestly believe that the one thing that's constant from where we sit as humans is change. The one thing that, that we all will know as we flow through this life from birth to death is change. Every moment we're different. And you can fight it or you can embrace it. And when you embrace that change, you can guide it. Now to me, when we guide change, that's, that's the ultimate opportunity that we have in these brief, beautiful moments on this planet. And, when we, and I honestly believe that when we function together as an organism, doing the same things around the world, going deeper, broader, wider, higher, that we can have a much greater impact on that change than we are today. So with that, let me invite my friend and colleague, the Chief Operating Officer of USGBC and President of GBCI, and the incoming Chief Executive Officer of USGBC and GBCI, Mahesh Ramanujan. <laughs> it's hard to beat that show, so let me keep it super simple. Um, we are hiring. You're welcome to join. <laughs> I am absolutely excited about this particular expanding lead conversation because it sums it up of all the seven years of questions and answers that you received today. It doesn't get any simpler. Our commitment is to make it insanely simple. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your leadership. We'll be tracking you. We'll be watching you. Bring the data. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gautami.